Today we're going to learn the difference between a crop sensor and full frame camera and which one may be better for your photography. What's going on guys, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks and tips to make photography and photo editing a whole lot easier. So if that sounds like something that you'd be into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more great videos just like today's. Today we'll be talking about the differences between a full frame and a crop sensor camera, what those differences actually are and how they're going to apply to you. Now if you're totally new to cameras, you maybe have never even heard what a crop sensor or a full frame is. Maybe you just thought that a camera is a camera. What someone's talking about when they say a crop sensor or a full frame camera, they're talking about the size of the sensor. The sensor is this little tiny square inside of your camera body that takes in all of the light and turns that into a photo. And depending on which camera you're using, your sensor size is going to vary. When someone is talking about a full frame camera, they're referring to a camera that has a sensor of 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters, which is a three by two ratio. So you're probably thinking, where the heck did you get that number from? And it actually all originates from back in the film days when we had 35 millimeter film. So a full frame sensor is equivalent to 35 millimeter film. That's where the numbers come from. Now when someone's talking about a crop sensor, they're still talking about the sensor size, but now that sensor sensor size is 24 by 16, which is still a three by two ratio. It's just a little bit smaller. So imagine your full frame sensor looking something like this. A crop sensor is going to look something like this. So just a little bit smaller. Now that you know that a crop sensor has a physically smaller sensor than a full frame, you're probably wondering, well, is that a bad thing? And how might that affect my photos? The first major difference between a crop sensor and full frame is a crop factor. So like I said, we go from a full frame down to a crop sensor and when you downscale your sensor a little bit you have a crop factor. So for most crop sensor cameras they have a crop of 1.5 times but for Canon cameras like the ones that I use it has a 1.6 times crop. Now the easiest way to think of crop factor is if you put on a 40 millimeter lens and you add one and a half times of crop to that, it's going to be even more zoomed in. It's gonna look more like a 65 millimeter lens. Now that probably sounds a little bit confusing but here's another version of myself in a warmer coat to explain what's going on. So these equations with crop factor probably don't make any sense if you haven't seen two side-by-side -side photos of a crop sensor versus full frame in the exact same spot. So that's why I came out here to this boardwalk behind me to compare my crop sensor camera, which is my Canon T3i, versus my full frame camera, which is my 6D Mark II. So I'm gonna set up both of these cameras in the exact same position using the same lens at the same focal length so you can see the difference between the full frame and the crop sensor camera. In this case, our crop sensor has a 1.6 times crop since it's a Canon, but the general rule of thumb is a crop factor of 1.5 for other camera brands. So in my first example, I'm gonna shoot at 40 mils so you can see the sky, the trees, the boardwalk, the water, you can see everything that you need. But now throwing that 40 mil lens onto our crop sensor, you can see how it drastically changes our field of view. It really punches in and looks a lot more zoomed than before. And that's where that crop factor of 1.6 times is coming into play. Since our sensor is that much smaller, there's less information that can be displayed at once. So it's basically just punching into our photo. If I overlay the two photos, you can see they're the exact same, but the crop sensor just has a smaller field of view compared to the full frame. Now, just because it looks more punched in at 40 mils, that doesn't mean that we can't have an equivalent to a full frame 40 mil on a crop sensor camera. So if I want to replicate that full frame 40 mil on my crop sensor camera, then what I can do is divide my focal length of 40 mils by 1.6. So 40 divided by 1.6 will equal 25 mils. So 25 mils will look the exact same on a crop sensor as 40 mils will look on a full frame. So then that way, if you're using a crop sensor, you can have an equivalent look to a full frame camera. So if you're wanting to capture a really wide angle scene, a crop sensor is going to be a bit harder since you need that much wider angle of a lens to do so. But when you wanted to shoot something really zoomed in, a crop sensor is going to help you a ton. So in this example, I wanted to shoot the mountains behind me. So I put on my 70 to 200 mil lens on my 60 Mark II, which is the full frame camera and put it at 200 mils. So this is how the photo turned out. It's very zoomed in, it's 200 mils. It's exactly what you'd expect to see. Now I go and put that 200 mil lens on my crop sensor camera and all of a sudden it is so much more zoomed in and the mountains look quite a bit bigger. And that's because with the Canon 1.6 crop factor, 
that 200 mil lens now becomes a 320 mil lens. So when you're wanting to shoot something far away like mountains or you want to shoot wildlife, sports, something like that, having a crop sensor is going to make a huge difference because you're going to be getting so much more zoom because of that crop factor. God, I'm cold. So at this point, you're probably thinking, why would I ever want to shoot on a full frame? I can leave those suckers with the full frames behind while I'm getting those long lens telephoto shots that no one else can get. Well, the thing is, when you're wanting to shoot a wide angle, that's where the tables start to turn on you. Say, for example, I'm shooting on my full frame camera at 17 millimeters, and I want to have the exact same looking focal length on my crop sensor camera. So doing the equation of my focal length of 17 millimeters divided by 1.6, which is the Canon crop factor, that equals about 10 millimeters. So now I need to have a 10 millimeter lens that I probably don't own. You end up lacking shooting wide photos of the crop sensor because you need that much wider of a lens to get everything in that you're wanting. And if you don't already own that really wide lens, it can be a bit of a hassle. Now, another thing most people are uncertain of is does a crop sensor give you more depth of field or more blurred background at an equivalent focal length. So for example, if I went and shot at 75 millimeters on my full frame, would 75 millimeters on my crop sensor be that much more blurred because of that 1.5 or 1.6 crop factor. Unfortunately, a crop sensor does not give you a more blurred background even though you have that crop factor. The easiest way to prove my point is that if a full frame sensor sees all of this, a crop sensor is just kind of punching in and seeing that middle section of it. The compression, the depth of field, all that stuff is still there, it's just now in a smaller area. So just by cropping in like that, it's not going to add more depth of field and more blur to your photo. Although that would be pretty sweet if it was the case. Now when it comes to blurred backgrounds, full frame cameras definitely have the advantage and they'll usually have a more milky looking background at an equivalent aperture. So for example, if I'm shooting wide Wide open at f 2.8 I can divide 2.8 by my crop factor of 1.5 or 1.6 in my case and that will give me my equivalent aperture so for this example f 2.8 divided by 1.6 equals f 1.8 so basically if you wanted to have that same blurred look as 2.8 on a full frame you need to shoot at 1.8 on a crop sensor now again that all seems totally fine and dandy until you start getting up to something really wide on a full frame camera like 1.8 or 1.2 and then suddenly when you divide that crop factor you start getting into an f-stop range that isn't even possible on your lens or even possible to buy in general. So similarly to how once you get too wide of the crop sensor, you start to run into some issues. If you start to get too wide of an aperture, you end up having a hard time making an equivalent to a full frame camera. So again, the full frame does have the edge with that nice blurred background, but for the most part, unless you're at a really wide aperture, you can still replicate that full frame look on a crop sensor using this equation that we just talked about, which is the aperture divided by your crop factor factor equals the equivalent aperture on a crop sensor. The last primary difference between a crop sensor and full frame camera is that full frames will perform better in low light than a crop sensor camera, but that's simply because it has a larger sensor so it can process more information and it can do better with less light on that larger sensor. So that leads me into the final question of do you need a full frame in your photography? And the answer is no, you totally do not need a full frame camera to be taking better pictures because like I talked about in this video, you can use all of those equations to take equivalent photos that look almost exactly the same as it would on a full frame camera. The only real struggles that you'll run into is if you're shooting at a really wide aperture, like 1.8, or you're wanting to shoot really wide angle without getting any distortion. That's where a full frame will perform a little bit better than a crop sensor. But ultimately, the question that you need to ask yourself is how much money am I making from my photography? Because cameras are expensive, lenses are expensive, and it's kind of hard to justify dropping $5,000 on a new full frame body and some lenses when the crop sensor camera you're using currently just works fine for what you're doing. The next thing you need to ask yourself is if you're using a full frame camera, are you really going to get the most out of those advantages at the wider apertures, the wider focal lengths, the better low light performance, and that type of thing? Is that going to really make the difference in your photography? If the answer is no, then maybe it's not worth shelling out that money for a full frame camera. In my opinion, you'll definitely feel when you're ready to upgrade your camera body or your lenses because you'll feel limited by what they can currently do. When I first started, I was just using this 18 to 55 kit lens from Canon. I use this all the time for years before I ever decided to buy anything more expensive than that. I believe this lens was f4 to 5.6 depending on the zoom range that you're at and that ended up becoming an issue for me and hindering what I was wanting to shoot 
which is why I ended up investing in a faster lens. From there, it just kind of progresses through camera bodies and what you need for settings or low light performance and so on and so forth until you realize, okay, I need to make the jump from crop sensor to full frame. But like I said, I feel like you'll truly know when that time has come for you. All right guys, so that is the differences between crop sensor and full frame camera and how you can get the most out of your crop sensor camera to make it look like a full frame even though it's not. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also leave a comment down below. Let me know what camera you shoot on. What is your opinion on crop sensor versus full frame? If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more like this one, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more great videos like today's. If you're new to photography and you're looking to jumpstart that learning, then make sure to download my Photography Essentials ebook for free via the link down in the description below. And by downloading that free ebook, you also sign up to get free photography and photo editing tutorial straight to your inbox every week. With that, my name is Brandon from BeWillCreative.com. You can find me on Instagram at BurnWills. Thank you so much for stopping by today and I'll catch you back here next time. See you then.